What do I do if I lose my hardware key? Uh. That is a really common question and a totally valid one. The answer is also the reason why I have consistently recommended that you buy two YubiKeys whenever you are setting up your multi-factor authentication. Now this series that I've been doing on my channel is all about hardware keys and it is sponsored by Yubico. We have partnered not only to share resources about hardware keys, but I also have an awesome coupon code that you can use on multiple keys. More on that in a bit. The reason why I recommend getting Getting more than one is to prevent you from getting locked out of an account. Now these keys are used for authentication. After you log into a website with your username and your password, the website prompts you to plug in a key and that is one of these keys. Now I have discussed how to set one of these up and what they are used for. This is called multi-factor authentication. But today I am going to show you how to set up more than one on your online accounts. So let's say that you carry your YubiKey with you and for some reason it gets lost while you are traveling or it gets damaged. If you only have that one key for logging into your online accounts, then how would you log in? Well, you might get stuck on that screen that asks you to insert the key. But if you have a spare key set up for that online account, you could just grab the spare key and plug that one in instead. If you lose the YubiKey that you use the most often, we will call this one your primary key, then what you could use is the second YubiKey to log into your accounts, and this one will be your spare key. So YubiKeys don't allow for secrets to be read from them. So so that also means that you cannot clone one key to another one. That also means that the security is very strong, but you will need to set up each key separately with very much the same process as the first one. The keys are also not linked together. They are treated like completely separate entities. Now, while this process will be time consuming, it's also a thing that you only have to do once. You won't need to do it again until you choose to buy a new key to replace an older one or you buy a new one as a spare. The websites I will demo use one of these protocols. Either they use OTP or FIDO protocols, so you simply have to plug in the YubiKey and touch the little gold sensors on the side, or they use OATH TOTP, which means that they will still ask you for a six digit code, which will be shown to you via an app. Note that some sites will still only support SMS 2FA, meaning they text you a code that you have to type in. This is not as secure as a YubiKey but it is better than no security at all. So before I show you a couple of demos, would you mind subscribing if you are enjoying this video? I have dedicated this channel to bringing you really in-depth tech content with pro tips trickled in. So if you wanna use those pro tips that I drop every single week, a click on the subscribe button tells me what kind of content you want to see more of. Okay, so first we have OTP or FIDO supported websites. These ones are really easy, especially if they support setting up more than one YubiKey natively. So let's set up two keys on Google and Facebook accounts, which both support these kind of protocols. So over on my computer on Google, you will need to go to your security settings and then browse to the setting that says two-step verification and click get started. From here, just choose show more options and security key. Grab your keys as you will need to plug them in soon. Click next, then okay on the pop-up prompt, then follow those on screen directions to plug in your key, type in a pin code or create a new one if you've never made one, and then touch your key. This registers your key. Now go back to that two-step verification setting and choose security key. This will bring you to the security key menu, choose add security key, and again, follow those same on-screen prompts while plugging in your spare YubiKey. If you are asked to add a name, then you can do so here, or you can just go into the pass key setting page and rename your keys on that page. They will be listed at the bottom of that page. One of my keys can also be used as a pass key, while the other one can only be used for 2FA. So now it does not matter which key I have with me, both of them allow me to log into my Google account in the same way, by plugging in the key and touching it. The 2FA one still requires me to put in my password, but the pass key one works like a pass key on supported devices, or just as a 2FA key on devices that don't support pass keys yet. That is so cool. The second example, this one took 
took me forever to find the Facebook settings page for 2FA. So the link for this is accountcenter.facebook.com. So I'll put that link down in the show notes in the description as well. You choose password and security and then choose two factor authentication. From here, it's pretty similar. You will need to choose how you wanna log in. That would be security keys. Click add, then follow the directions on the screen to add your new key. You insert it, you type in the pin for that key or add a new one if you've never done a pin before and you add it. Do you wanna add a spare key? You go back to the security keys page, choose your second key and go through the same setup process. So if at this point you are thinking, yeah, okay, I get it. I should probably get another YubiKey. First, yes, you absolutely should. But also I have teamed up with Yubico to give you a great discount just for my viewers. Use the coupon code Shannon Morse for $5 off any YubiKey 5 series or security key series purchase. And you can absolutely use this code more than once. It is more important than ever to future-proof your accounts from today's threats. And using a YubiKey for 2FA or passkey support is one of the best ways to combat these techniques. Click the link down below to snag yours and a huge thank you to Yubico for partnering with my channel and for sponsoring this episode. Okay, but what if the site supports that OATH TOTP protocol. You know if it's TOTP type of login protocols if the site shows you a QR code whenever you are setting up your multi-factor authentication option. So for sites that only accept one key or they do the QR codes or they require you to set up an app that gives you a six digit code to type in on the authentication page, we can still use a YubiKey. We do it with the Yubico Authenticator app and then set up all those keys in the Yubico Authenticator app. So this app is available cross-platform, so I'm doing my demo on a desktop computer. Now this one took me a bit to figure out how to do this correctly, how to time it correctly, but I did figure it out. So first off, just download the Yubico Authenticator app, open it and insert your key, then hop on your website and go to the security page. So in my case, I'm gonna use Squarespace since they only support those six digit codes. So this is a great example of one that does not support hardware keys in essence, but they kind of do. So when I get to the page that pulls up that QR code, the first thing I'm going to do is print out a backup of that QR code, because anytime I need to add a new YubiKey to that account, I can reuse the same QR code. Huh. It's genius. Now, while I am chilling on this page, I go to the Yubico Authenticator app, I plug in my key and I click the menu icon, and then I click add account. Now this is gonna find the QR code pulled up on my display, and it automatically adds the website name, the profile, and the secret to the Authenticator app. When I click save, it will add that key pairing to my Authenticator app as a new account. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to do the same thing with the second YubiKey. I will unplug my current key, plug in the spare, and I will add the same account to my spare YubiKey again. So I hit add account, I verify the data looks right, I click save. So now both of my YubiKeys, both the primary and the spare, have the same exact secret key tied to them. So now I go back over to Squarespace, I click OK, which tells them that I have linked the app to the QR code. This takes me away from the screen with the QR code, which is the reason why I said to save it, because if I ever lose one of my YubiKeys and I wanna add another one, but I still have the spare on there, I will need that same QR code to add a secondary key to the same account. Now Squarespace doesn't know any better. It just assumes that these are all the same key because they all store the same secret. So if I wanna add a new one, even though my spare key is still tied to the account, then I will need to use that same QR code as I can't get a new QR code unless I completely revoke the current secret and I allow Squarespace to refresh and create a new QR code for a new set of keys. So Squarespace is going to ask me for a six digit code and I can get this by clicking on the profile in my Yubico Authenticator app and copying that six digit code from the app into Squarespace and then I hit save. Now it doesn't matter which key I am currently using, either one's six digit code will work when I try to log into Squarespace. If you lose one of your keys, 
the spare key will allow you to log into your accounts. So make sure you keep your spares somewhere safe and use the primary whenever you're traveling or commuting or whatnot. If one gets lost, you will log in with the spare key and revoke the lost YubiKey. Now, if you lose both keys, well, that is why we have those backup codes that I did a whole video about up here. So make sure you watch that next to understand why backup codes exist and what they are used for. So that wraps up how to use two YubiKeys, even if a website only suggests QR codes and it looks like they can only use one. You can actually use two. I think this is a really, really cool hack and it's a wonderful way to secure your online accounts. Leave your questions down below and I will see y'all next time. Bye y'all.